you know, two weeks ago, you you not only got to play, but scored a try against, you know, some of the best test players across the, the four nations in the UK. Surely they must score, and so they do. It's Vincent Sikuka. It was honestly an incredible experience for me. There was a massive build-up uh, to the experience, you know. Sets up, Chituka will pick it up. And Vincent Chituka. What a competition has always been, it's always been a personal battle for me. It's like trying to outplay myself. Um, I always do my best to be a positive influence upon the squad, whether that is on the field and off the field. Um, during trainings, I always try my, I try my best to be vocal in terms of my leadership roles and departments on the field as well. And she took her running down the line. Was that ever in your mind, the fact that you thought maybe you might not make it because you're not part of, you know, you're sort of the mainstream schools? It nearly feels like professional rugby is, is more a dream than it could ever be a reality. I mean, you know, you, you nearly want it, but it's like, ah, uh, it's maybe too far-fetched. He worked his socks off, and again, he puts the pressure and he competes for the ball on the ground, fighting for those scraps. This time around goes to Chituka. Miscommunication, lucky for Chituka to come. You know, when I got it, it was, it was, it felt like it felt like I just won a World Cup at the moment. I remember I celebrated <laughs> my brothers. Hello and welcome to Forever Sports and Forever Rugby. And today we've got a, a channel first, actually, as we as chat to our first ever uh, player on the channel. And as a Lions fan, it's brilliant to be able to chat to a Lions um, player first and probably one of my favorite players at the moment. So, Vincent, how are you? I'm all thanks to yourself, Steve. Thank you very much for having me. No, thank you for, for jumping on. Um, I mean, Vincent, I mean, what a, a crazy few few years you, you've had in terms of a bit of a meteoric rise in in within the the lines, and then recently playing against um, the British and Irish Lions. So I think we'll probably sort of we'll start with the with the lines there, and we'll sort of talk then we'll talk about sort of what's been going on in the last of the year and, and the plans for the future. But just can you just sort of sum up your experience? The fact that you know two weeks ago you you not only got to play but scored a try against you know some of the best test players across the, the four nations in the UK. Um, so my experience. I think the the best way to describe it. It was honestly an incredible experience for me. There was a massive build up uh, to the experience. You know, a little bit of uh, um, a lot of pressure for myself actually because. I knew it was a big occasion for me. It's always I always say that the the best players rise up to occasions, and don't check under the occasion. So for for me, it was a massive thing to continue my form even in a game of that caliber, and I tried to do that to my best to the best of my ability. Um, it was just an honor to to be on the field and play. Get the opportunity that not so many players do get. Uh, unfortunately, I was one that uh, did get the opportunity to play against them, and yeah, I think. It was it was an amazing game. It was amazing to to play against them, have a little bit of a chat with the, the players as well. And I mean, we all saw you sort of going down with the shoulder and stuff like that. And I think, as we said in the, in, the, in the sort of the pre-chat, just one of those games where you know you just you just can't go off. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, there was a there was a, as I, as I scored, there was a massive lot of pain that shot through my body and specifically my shoulder and. You know, I to a certain extent, as I said, um, I thought I was going off as well, but the, just the, the opportunity for me was just too great to to give away lightly. And I thought if there's any chance of me continuing to play, then I'll definitely take that. And, you know, that's what I did. And I actually was surprised I managed to make it past the full 80. And, yeah, a little bit of a sore shoulder, but I'm on my way to recovery. I look forward to seeing you back. And in terms of that game, you know, were there, were there any players going into the game that you sort of, couldn't wait to face. And then during the game, was there any sort of player um, from their side which which really stuck out or anybody that, you know, sent, tended to have a bit of a, a personal sort of um, almost competition to try and get the better of? Um, if I'm being 100% honest, then just every single player there, I think there was, uh, I think that's the beauty of playing against the British Islands that every single player is a world-class player. There's no, there's no average. There's every, every single player I can nearly say is one of the best to do it in their position, if that makes sense. And uh, so I think for me, just the, the entire, this, everyone, um, everyone on the field was, uh, was someone I look forward to play against. And one person that specifically stood out for me was uh, Hamish Watson. Um, I was not all too familiar with him 
before the game. And uh, he definitely left a print in my mind that I probably never forget. So, absolutely. And then, I mean, going a bit further, sort of further back, I mean, it's been a very difficult sort of the last year for, for everyone, including the um, players. But can you sort of talk about, you know, what was it like after, after that sort of experience, then coming back and playing you know, Super Rugby Unlocked and then, you know, playing Curry Cup and now back into then sort of a preparation series, now Rainbow Cup. It's been quite a disjointed calendar. Um, what is sort of, yeah, you know, I mean, what is it like coming back and then what, and what sort of kept you sort of um, motivated and trying to sort of keep your mind off what's going on off field with all the sort of, we didn't know what was going to happen with Super Rugby or what competition we we're going to be and, and we didn't know when Curry Cup was going to be and stuff like that. How do you sort of cloud out that noise? Well, for me, it was, um, I was actually a little bit uh, blessed uh, with uh, with everything that happened because just before COVID, I went uh, into an operation. I went into our room for my ankle. I had uh, I tore my ligament in my left ankle. I went for an operation in that. Um, in about the third or fourth came into su- in the Super Rugby campaign, and when when the lockdown initially happened, my thought process was like, "Oh, flip, yes, a breath of fresh air, some time to recover and get back onto the field as soon as possible." And obviously, we all assumed it would be three weeks, but it went on a lot longer than that. And, you know, I think in, in the, the first couple of weeks was for me was, was nearly graceful. Um, I was very gracious for the opportunity to buy time for myself to get back onto the field. And then the longer it took, for me, was, there, was, uh, there, was, there was a lot of build-up for... I wanted to get back to a better place on the field. And I think that was that was a big message for me in lockdown. So I trained hard in lockdown. I tried to stay as fit as possible throughout the entire lockdown as well, just so that I can get back and be not not only kick off where I left off, but grow from where I left off as well. And it was, it was my first actually operation in my, in, in my career. So it was, a, it was a little bit nerve-breaking. I thought, Flip, I've seen operations and how it goes for some players and they never come back the same. So for me, it was just a big thing that I, I never wanted that to happen to me. So it, it definitely bought me time for that. And it, got, it put me in a good mindset because I was, I was hungry and excited to get back. And, you know, in terms of competitions, yeah, it's, it's, it's just one of those, we, unfortunately, we live in a time where you kind of have to take what comes, what comes um, your way, you know, and make, and make something work out of not the greatest uh, situation. So I think we managed, um, and they say rugby managed to do that, you know, we got uh, some rugby cake uh, back on on TV, to rugby unlock going into the Curry Cup. And obviously there's a lot of uncertainty throughout this year in terms of uh, competition wise but i was more than happy to uh, play in any competition to be quite honest i think they are both prestigious competitions both super rugby and um the united rugby championship so i am more than happy and excited to play participate in either or. i suppose you're sort of lucky you know you got a little bit of the super rugby so you got sort of experience that and now and now moving yeah. to the united rugby championship i mean how excited are you to to go overseas i mean have you been to europe have you been to have you been to these any of these countries no Am I going to go play in very, very different conditions? Yeah, the, I think that's. I think the is the most exciting part for me is the fact that it's a complete, it's a completely different competition with completely different players and con- completely different conditions. Um, it always brings a new challenge, but uh, I, I always enjoy a good challenge, and uh, I mean, I'm excited. I haven't, I've never been to any of the countries in uh, Europe before, so it's it's also very. Uh, excited for me in terms of you know seeing what life is on that side of the world a little bit as well while we're there. And I mean we're seeing to a lesser extent now with with the lines that we're talking about you know the idea of, of the tour life you know we've seen like Louis Sam has got a bad haircut and all those sort of things. Can you sort of give give us a bit of an insight you know what's what's it like going going on a sort of a tour and stuff like that? And I mean how excited are you to be able to go to you know like either like a Scotland or like an Ireland or Wales for you know a week or two in terms of like with the, with the team and in a team environment. I think it's always exciting. Um, it's, it, it, it's always a good time, specifically just to build up towards the tour in the first couple of weeks. Everybody's kind of like, you know, everybody gets together. We have a, a goal in mind. We all set our targets and in terms of performances on the tour, you know, I think it's the most time you spend with the teammates so you really get to gel and get to know each other uh, on a personal basis. And then obviously it's the the the... The little games that you play in between as well to keep the boys excited and keep the boys happy. And then, yeah, just touring the countries and just seeing what uh, the different countries have to offer. I think that's always the, the one per- one of the greatest perks is that, you know, you get to work at the, and at the same time you get to enjoy the luxury of traveling. And what sort, of, what sort of tourist are you? I mean, when you go, are you the type of person that wants to go and see everything or are you, are you trying to, or, or are you just sort of quite a 
sort of take it as you can type person. Yeah, Flip, I want to see all the all the gems. I just want to see. I, I'm I'm very big about hidden gems because I feel like there's the no there's the normal major tourist attractions, which I also do want to go see. But for me, it's like I'm I, whenever I tour, I want to see the hidden gems. I want to see what the locals love about that city, if that makes sense. Um, mm. Besides the the main attractions, but like what what gets the locals going? And because obviously they're used to. The, the main attraction so they've got to find a little other satisfactory point so for me that's that's the type of choice i am so i definitely don't want to be indoors when i'm in tour it's like as soon as you get out i'm out the house and i'm yeah. trying to find something to do yeah and i mean in terms of the current months in terms of sort of the future we, we spoke a little bit about the fact that um sort of currently going through a bit of the citizenship um application stuff like that but i mean if i'm if i'm not mistaken part of spring box spring gold last year in that in that um that match what was that yeah. like playing and i mean you know sh- one one imagines obviously you know having cemented your spot in the lines and playing really good rugby. Um, next step's got to be international rugby. How much does that sort of play in your mind, or is it more sort of just focus on what you're doing now? And if it happens, it happens. Um, for me, I'm I'm very like uh, baby step driven, uh, one step at a time, um, go focus. And so I try not to look too much into the far future, but it is something that definitely does linger. No matter how much you try to avoid it, it will always linger and always pop up. And playing the green and gold was, it was massive. It was everything for me at the time, you know, because um, it was a very competitive squad of players that were up for selection. And I remember when I was watching the, when I was watching the selection, I was the last forward in in the last team. Is that, is, that, is that when you got when you found out when they announced as they announced it? Yes, as they announced it. And you know, I was the last four to get selected and I thought to myself like it was the best of fashion because I really wanted it. But at the same time I didn't want to I, I didn't want to feel entitled to that um role as well. So you know when I got it it was it was it, it felt like it felt like I just won a World Cup at the moment. I remember I celebrated <laughs> my brothers and it was, it was it was really an amazing moment, and you know to play in that in that game was great as well, you know. And I got a, I got a decent amount of game time, and I felt and I feel that um, I did the most with it as well. So you know it was, yeah, a very special moment in my career. And now, sort of going back a little bit, sort of your your roots and stuff like that, coming from a school which has yeah. not you know produced too many. Um, I mean, it's quite weird seeing uh, seeing somebody playing rugby at the top level with the school that that you know like my school used to play against. I mean, I, I went to Stanford College, so this was a small school in the, in the suburbs. We didn't we never we never had any sort of good rugby players and stuff like that. Um, but it must have been quite interesting looking back, sort of think. I mean, was that ever in your mind the fact that you thought maybe you might not make it because you're not part of you know you're sort of the mainstream schools? Um. Yeah, actually, it really was because coming out of school, it nearly feels like professional rugby is is more a dream than it could ever be a reality. Um, you know, you you nearly want it, but it's like ah, it's maybe too far fetched. So it was never my main focus. Actually, I I went to UJ and studying and getting my degree was my first priority. And rugby was kind of like I'll do it while I'm here and enjoy it while I'm here. And I got an opportunity to join the under-19 uh, Carry Cup team by um, Coach Joey Mungalo was the coach at the time, and he invited me. And he gave me a trial period, and I survived that trial period. And I, you know, I worked really hard to get into the team, and I played that competition. And then, yeah, my it was just getting invited to the team was already a big thing for me because, you know, as I said, coming from a small school, you you used to the competition that you play. And then obviously you watch the Caribbean week and the SS schools and you kind of watch those players and you look at them with that prestigiousness, if that makes sense. And then like you go there and I got invited and all those players are now my teammates. And um, for me, that was, that was pretty cool as well. Um, quite a transition as well. But I think it, I, I, I always say that's one thing that I've always enjoyed about being an underdog is that you're always a little bit, you're a little bit more hungry and you're a little bit more appreciative of the moment. And one thing I really, I, I really feel strongly about is that you don't have entitlement. And um, I think for me, that has been one thing that I've seen have a lot of players settle or nearly be content with where they are, if that makes sense. And I, I didn't have any entitlements. I came here and I was grateful for the opportunity and I wanted to make the most out of it. And, you know, with the grace of God on my side as well, everything turned out as it did. And I got one opportunity to the next opportunity. And, you know, I've been fortunate enough to grab um, all of them at both hands. And then uh, playing, playing with your brother, I mean, first of all, did, did, you, did you play with him at school? Or were you sort of just, I mean, at, at, at first team or just... 
No, not at all, because uh, he's so I'm two years older than him, so we never actually played with each other in terms of age group yeah. in, um, in school. So, 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 anyway, so at first he didn't quite like overlap? No, never, never. And then, and then he went to Wits, didn't he? So was, was, was there a little bit of, of rivalry there at, on Vast, Varsity Cup absolutely. Mondays? Absolutely, absolutely. I always, I, I always told him that, you know what, it doesn't matter what happens in the Varsity Cup, but so we'll never lose to UJ. And, you know, for the first couple of years, that, that was always, it was always a thing. Like when it comes to the Joe Book battle, UJ will always come up on top. It was, and then, it was an easy shot at the time. <laughs> yeah, literally. And then last year for the first time, but came up um, with a win against UJ in the Varsity Cup, at least. And then that, that for me, I mean, it was big at home. There was definitely a lot of banter, a lot of chirping for that entire month, if I'm not mistaken. And I tell you, there's definitely been a, a good, a good balance of rivalry between the two. And now, I mean, you guys get to—I mean, you guys both get to play on week, week in, week out basis. I mean, was do you think that you know? I mean, was he also sort of a bit like you, where he wasn't really sort of thinking about the rugby part, or you know, when you started sort of going to under 19 stuff like that, did he start thinking, well, if you can do it, then then so can he? You know, what's 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 that relationship been like? Yeah, I think it's been it's been um, definitely different. I think it's a different path for him um, because simply because it nearly feels um, that when you do, I think what, once I did it, it's like okay, it's not impossible. Nearly, if that makes sense, it's kind of like you know what it's. So it's not that it's not hard. It is still hard because he, there's still uh, a lot of factors against him. But it's like it's possible. So if I work hard enough, I can do it, and I, I, it is possible for me. To, to be there. So I think that was his big thing is just to make sure that he doesn't let the opportunity slip him and that he works hard enough that when the opportunity does come, he's ready for it. And, you know, um, it's, it's been a big thing for him. And I remember coming uh, as he joined the squad and started training and, you know, he really pushed himself really hard training. He had a really good training session and then he got the opportunity. And for me, that was, I felt, flip, I felt honored to be able to play with him because, you know, it's one thing that, it's one thing that after high school, he's kind of like, will we ever... So you, you nearly question, you doubt, and then I, I actually did get the opportunity to play with him. And, uh, you know, it's every game that I get to play with him is always it's always uh, pretty cool for me because every time I just I just wish we had more time, I guess, on the field together. But I'm still grateful for the fact that we can still, you know, play together. I think that's not a lot of siblings get that opportunity. And I did. So absolutely grateful. Yeah, well, I mean, you've got plenty of years ahead to try and add, add to the game time to get on the field. Um, of course, of course, and, of course. And in, ter in terms of your sort of relation now, are, are we are we are we carpooling to to practice and stuff like that, or um, what's your sort of relation now, or are you guys doing sort of your own thing? Yeah, I think we we try to we do do a lot of things together. Just uh, as a whole, I have a very good relationship with most of my uh, well, all my brothers, not most all my brothers, and we kind of kind of do pretty much life together, but. With that being said, we, um, with me and Manu, we also do try to keep it. We still do try to become our own individuals, even in the same setup, because it's easy to kind of group us, if that makes sense. It's easy to kind of group us and group everything. But we still do try to, you know, do our own thing and be our own individual person. But then when we come together, it's always a good time. And I mean, so you mentioned, I mean, how many, how many buyers do you have? I mean, do we, do we have more Chatukas that the Lions are, are, are on the lookout for? Or are well, they older? What's the story? <laughs> There's, there's four of us. Um, there's four of us. Um, I have an older brother who's um, in architecture currently. He's, he's, he's in the architecture world and he's, he's doing that. Um, then there's me, there's Manu, and there's I have a baby brother who's at JP currently. Um, and yeah, he's, he's kind of in the balance of the two. He doesn't really know which way to go. Is it the books? Is it the, the game? So he's kind of making his decision now. Well, at least he's got two sort of good role models. We can hopefully try and make sure if he does do does choose the game that we can get another lines recruit there. So um, we'll wait and see there. Um, and in terms, I mean, lockdown stuff like that, and even, and even now, I suppose you know you can't really we can't go out these days. You can't sort of do what what do you do? Um, I mean, take us through sort of your week. I mean, what your normal week was um, before sort of COVID, and maybe what it is now. The fact that you can't go out. How do you how do you keep yourself entertained at home? I'm seeing a bit of a gym set at the back there. So I mean, how much training do you guys do at home these days and stuff like that? Yeah, so normally, so obviously, we still do get um, the most of our training done um, in at work when you go in. But um, it, there's a lot of there's a lot of individual responsibility that is on you as a player compared to what it used to be. Um, ever since the first the the first very first lockdown, 
it's kind of been like, it's your responsibility to keep fit. It's your responsibility to keep in shape, take care of your body. And um, it's easy to kind of let that go. But I think uh, with lockdown, specifically last year, it gave us, a, it, it, we had enough time to kind of learn the little habits that you need. So for me, it's always just to make sure my body's well oiled. I always say, so make sure I do my rehab and I do my extra session. And fitness is a big part of my game. So every time I feel like I'm slacking that, I'll always do like an extra fitness session uh, here and there. But the, at the same time, it's like, you got to take care of yourself and manage your body as well so that you're not overworking because we still do have uh, hectic, intense training sessions and contact sessions that we have to go through as well. So it's a fine balance in between the two. Yeah, I mean, that, that concept of overworking is quite, I think, quite interesting. How do you sort of, obviously, you've got your sort of session stuff like that, but I mean, people always talk about the fact that you've got to do sort of that work above. How do you sort of find that balance between, you know, you wanting, you thinking that maybe you can do more and not sort of overworking yourself and, and pushing, you know, injuries and stuff like that? I think it's it's it all depends on the individual, if I'm being 100% um, honest, because it, it, it really does differ. So I think when it comes to overworking is you know your body because your body will talk to you it definitely will mm -hmm. talk to you and it will, it will it will it will give you signs of um, various things i think sometimes people do push the injury because of the sometimes an opportunity is just too great to allow an injury to set you back so you you are nearly i don't want to say forced but you you nearly feel like you have to you, you've got to push through it and, and you know sometimes it works and you know you, you get through the injury and you get the opportunity as well and then your your career grows from there and other times you know you do too much and it set back and it puts you even in a worse position than um what you were in before so i think your body will always talk to you and depending on your position you will make you are uh, play players then therefore make decisions based on their scenario so sometimes like you're not getting game time you're not necessarily in the mix and you are you do have a niggle so it's a perfect time to take care of it if that makes sense and then make sure that when you are available you 100 percent a okay and other times it's kind of like uh, i can't afford to to get to be out i have to be on the field at all times so um yeah i think there's there's, there's definitely different pressures but your body will talk to you um if you are working you you always try to work hard but at the same time you've got to work smart and you know you do there's always help of the sports scientists that we work with and our conditioning coaches every anytime you feel confused or feel like oh, you're not exactly sure they they are the first people you go to and they'll give you a bit of a um put in the right direction and I mean, having having Ivan for Norway now as the coach, with he's got um, conditioning and stuff as a background. I mean, our, our, our training sessions, you know, quite quite high intensity and stuff like that. What's what's it like, you know, for somebody who's not necessarily had the sort of always the sort of the background, um, the rugby background that maybe previous coaches had. had? Um, what's 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 sort of the differences with him? I think um, conditioning has always been has always been a pride of the Lions. So um, that would always that was that was always a thing, and will always be. Um, a thing here at the Lions. I think it's it's, it's nearly in our DNA, mm -hmm. and um, yeah. So having having even as our head coach, it's 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 definitely not nothing too different because he's been here for so long. So I think the the difference is that um, he has he's really been here and seen and watched the Lions for guess for flip if I'm not mistaken over ten years now. So he has he really has insightful information on everything that he's seen, different players, different teams, different coaches, and he really does do his best to use that, all that knowledge and combine it and then use it accordingly to the team that he has now and the environment that he's in now, if that makes sense. So it is definitely different, but it's, 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 it's not different in any bad term. It's, I think it's, it's, it's different in a, in a way that could work and different in a way that grows us as well, you know? Mm -hmm. And I mean, being a loose forward, I mean, you probably chose one of the most competitive positions in South Africa and in the Lions. It's just with so much depth and stuff like that. What's what's the competition like? You know, I mean, you've got some very experienced players and something like Yaka Creel, but also you've got so many good youngsters in, you know, Frankie Horn now captaining the side at, at 22, yourself, your brother. Um, what's yeah. the what's what's the competition like? And, and you know, is it how much, you know, is it, is it sort of helping people and how much is it always sort of I need to make sure that that player doesn't outplay me? I think for me, it's it's so competition is always a, it's always a big thing uh, and uh, you know specifically as you said we've got a lot of we've got a lot of um, news forwards here that are competing um, 
week in, week out. And I think for me, it's, what a competition has always been, it's always been a personal battle for me. It's like trying to outplay myself and trying to be, and I always tell myself, I always try to be influential for the team. And, I, and that's when I feel like I've done a good enough job. If I, if, if my contributions to the game were influential to the benefit of the team, and um, that that's always a uh, something that I base myself and judge myself um, on. And then I'll, I'll obviously compare myself to the best and uh, and try to take pointers and tips from that. And you know, the best currently is Peter Steph, the toy in in the loose forward position. And I, I always, you know, I always watch and try to learn and grow my game as well at the same time. So the competition is definitely good because you, it keeps you on your toes, keeps you, definitely keeps you on your toes. And I mean, despite being, you know, how, how young you are and stuff like that, you know, safe to say one of the sort of senior members of the squad, especially looking at, you know, how many youngsters are coming in. I mean, what's what's that like being, I mean, it's, it's pretty much what, four years since, since you left high school and that time you sort of become a pressure rugby player and suddenly one of the senior sort of players in, in one of the top four franchises in, in the country. You know, what's, what, 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 what's, what's that role mean to you? I think it's 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 nearly something I, I never saw coming so quickly. If that makes sense, um, mm -hmm. it was kind of like you know when you when you think of senior players, you think of Flip, Springboks, Jaco Creo, Ron Whiteley. Those are the players that come into come into mind. And I never thought that I would be filling those shoes so quickly. It's for me. It's it, it always a it was an honor. I think the biggest thing for me is just to to step up and actually fill those shoes, you know, because the shoes are there. It's time to put your feet in and actually fill them. So um, I always do my best to be a positive influence upon the squad, whether that is on the field and off the field. Um, during trainings, I always try my, I try my best to be vocal in terms of my leadership roles and departments on the field as well. And, yeah, it, it's, I think it's, it's an amazing experience because you do, you do kind of – I am in between both. I am worth the the juniors in terms of age and you know um, career, but it's like in terms of in terms of where I am in the uh, in terms of position in the Lions, I'm, I'm I'm a senior in the team, and I think it's 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 a good balance, and I I personally I'm enjoying every second of it if I'm being honest. And I mean now, sort of, with with Franco Horn now, at, at also the same age as you, captain and stuff like that. You know, how how important is it for people like senior players like for you to, to back him up? For somebody that young, you still also much like you, you know, still sort of establishing himself within um, within the SA rugby ranks, but now having to captain and stuff like that. You know, how important is it that that players like you are are fully behind him and and, and helping out to try and make sure that um, as a leadership group, the lines are very strong. Yeah, I think it's it's, it's very important because ultimately. Um, as you said, he is he is still young, but you know he's been given he's been given the responsibility, and there's nothing worse than feeling inadequate for the job. And uh, I think um, as the, the other leaders in the squad, our our responsibility is to make him feel that he's more than adequate because they wouldn't have given him the the, the role or the responsibility if he wasn't. So it's definitely been a big thing for me to support him and to you know. Be with him where I can, and yeah, absolutely. I think he's he's doing a, a great job at the moment. And now outside of rugby, what what what? How do you how do you keep yourself sort of entertained, or and and sort of sometimes be able to step away from the game stuff like that? Um, I'm a very uh, I'm uh, very big on socializing and meeting and having time a good time with friends. Uh, and you know, obviously with lockdown, it's I haven't had a lot of that and a lot of opportunities to do any of that actually. So it's been hard on that front for me off the field, but um, I have tried to start watching a lot more series and listen to a lot more podcasts currently. And um, yeah, so that's what that's what's um, occupying a lot more of my time. Um, I also watch a lot more rugby. Now that you've got a lot more time, I'm, I'm watching a lot more rugby. I'm learning a lot more. Um, and yeah, it, I think it's 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 all to the benefit of my career because I wasn't I wasn't too much I didn't watch too much rugby um, initially, and I was kind of like okay I watched the important games and the big games but now it's kind of like every game matters and you put on if there's rugby on you watch the rugby if that makes sense so um, that that's currently where I am now that occupies a lot of my time I yeah I think that work. 
flip them on phone calls a hell of a lot more as well. Obviously, you can't be with anybody, so it's like yeah. I've got to I've got to contact everybody over the phone. So yeah, that 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 too is has been massive. So yeah, that's pretty much my routine currently. And I mean, I mean, in terms, of, I mean, are there any specific teams that you start watching, or any sort of players, maybe that sort of you know really sort of remind yourself like, oh, this team's playing, or this player's watching, so I'd really like to to watch, or any leagues, maybe. Yeah, so um, I'll obviously watch all the local games that we have and all the international games. I thought, uh, like last week, Saturday, that that they just passed now, I thought was, I literally spent the entire day mm. on front of the TV watching rugby like, from the morning until, the, at, uh, until later at night. So um, all the international games, all the local games, and I specifically watch um, Holocrons because I have a mate, Tyron Green, that plays there yeah. now um, currently. So I watch, I, I I do my best to watch all of their games as well. So, in terms of that league, I'll watch all the games related to the Harlequins as well. So, yeah. Okay. And, I mean, and just, just I mean, the, whole, the whole point of our channel is sort of being for the fans and by the fans. So, just a word for yeah. the fans, the fact that, you know, we just, we can't go to the ground. And I'm actually, I think I'm going to have to come as a, get a media pass just to get back to, to Emirates Airline Parks and miss it. But just, what, what's it like playing without the fans? And, and, you know, how much of a difference does it make to have to have the, the Ellis Park faithful back or when they when they eventually get back into the stands, it's 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 different and it's hard, um, and you miss it. You miss having the the fans behind you, and you know having having the opportunity to give them a good performance and have. So I feel like we enjoy them as much as they enjoy us, if that makes sense. And you know, it's it was it's been a big part of the game. I think, but coming into senior rugby, that's one of the most it was one of the things you look up to the most and you, you, you crave the most. It's kind of like, yo, I can't wait until I get fans behind me and it's and everybody's watching and it's a good time and, you know, now it's kind of taken away. And it, it's hard, but, you know, as I said, we, we're, in a, we're in the world currently where there's a lot of there's a lot of battles that we have to face. And I think, I think I'm grateful to the fans because they are still so loyal and they are still there and they still support us, even though they can't be necessarily with us on the on the field and in Ellis Park, but they're still there and they are still present, you know. It nearly feels like um they haven't they haven't gone away. And Philip, I'm grateful to that. The Lions is grateful to that and it's a, it's a massive, it's a massive it's a massive thank you to the fans. And I mean, do you do you get recognised in and around stuff? I mean, how many how many people? I mean, have you gotten used to do people come up to you in the streets stuff like that and recognise you stuff like that? And have you gotten used to it, or is it still something you come to terms with? Yeah, um, I think so. It, it does happen every now and again, and uh, it is. I guess it is still something I come to terms with because it's not. It's not. I guess I don't expect it. It's not like I expect it or anything. It's like when I walk and it happens, like oh. Oh no! Definitely, let's take a picture. Let's have a bit of a conversation. Let's chat, and then you know, um, they go on with their day, and I go on with mine. And it's it's, it's definitely still, it it just makes me more appreciative of that flip. Fans really do care, and they really it 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 it, it becomes personal if that makes sense. So um, to live up to that expectation as well, you know, you get young kids that come up to you and are excited to see you, and you know, um, look up to you. So it's kind of like. You know, you want to give, you want to be the best role model that you possibly can be, and the best player you can be, not only for yourself but for the team and for the fans as well. Okay, and then just just lastly, in wrapping up, um, can you sort of what's what has been your your biggest highlight in your career so far, and then what's your sort of maybe even in the immediate future, what's what's one of your biggest sort of maybe goals or something, or something you're really looking forward to in in the coming upcoming months or years? Jeez. Biggest highlights in my career. Um, it will definitely have to be which is Irish Lions, um, second place green versus gold. Yeah. Uh, last year, definitely those two games I will never forget. Um, very, very big moments in my career and moments, yeah, opportunities that never come often, once in a lifetime opportunities that I was blessed enough to play in. So those will definitely be the top two highlights of my career, especially scoring against the British Irish Lions. As much yeah. as it was a kind of anti-climax, but it was it was still a massive highlight to, uh, for me as well. You know, um, like I remember after the game, I was talking to my brother and I was like, "Look, I actually can't believe I scored yeah. a try against the British Irish Lions." So it was it's definitely a massive highlight for me. 
Uh, what am I looking forward to? I think currently for me, the the, the next big thing for me is uh, the United Rugby Championship. Um, I'm really looking forward to entering that competition and uh, doing our base as a union and my base as an individual to dominate that competition and to, to, to be exposed to completely different players, completely different environments, and then still uh, thrive in those environments. Um, it's, it, it's a really big, big thing for me as well. There's a lot of work going in behind the scenes to make it happen and to make it a smooth transition as well. So it's really exciting. I don't know if you follow the, the United Rugby Championship Twitter account and stuff like that, but um, they, they released a, an image with all the, all the players to watch. Um, and and your brother was the got got, got the, the the nod um as the lions one um not 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 sure maybe it was supposed to be you but um have you guys seen it and does it give you a bit of stick for it um no actually i haven't uh i haven't seen it i'll definitely as soon as we are done yeah go take a look and actually go give him a bit you know, give him a bit of a stick of like look you got it why that's a little bit unfair you know give it a bit uh show him a little bit but no definitely uh, he deserves it. He is definitely a player to watch. There's so much more that he can bring to the game, and it's, 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 I'm excited to see, to be, to be involved in that process and to see it as well. Uh, perfect. Well, Vincent, thank you so much. Um, really, really appreciate it. As I said, as a Lions fan, it's so cool to be able to have the first person on the channel be, be a, a big Lions player at the moment. Um, good luck with the recovery and stuff like that, and I hope to see you in person in, in Ellis Park soon. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.